Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to install Webcon BPS 2023. Before I walk you through the installation process, I'd like to cover all the prerequisites to make sure you have everything that you will need before even launching the installer. As you will see, the preparation is the difficult part, and the installation process itself is relatively trivial. In this video, we'll be installing the standalone version of Webcon BPS 2023. We have chosen Active Directory as our source of user authentication, and we'll be using the Application Pool account to connect Portal to the database through integrated authentication. The server on which we are installing Portal must be part of the Active Directory domain. During the installation, we will create databases, install Designer Studio, the Solar Search Engine, and the Workflow Service. The Search Engine and the Service form the backend of our system. The administrator will use the Designer Studio tool to configure applications for end users. One more key element of all modern Webcon BPS installations is the portal site hosted on IIS. This will serve as the end user interface that regular users will use to interact with applications through their chosen browser. It's worth noting that an end user does not have to install anything to access Webcon BPS. There are optional plugins that they can install, but those are not relevant right now. Let's talk about the software requirements. Webcon BPS needs to be installed on a machine with Windows Server 2016 or higher. It must have the activated role, web server, IIS, and active Windows authentication. We will also need a separate machine with MS SQL Server 2014 or higher with full text search feature. As mentioned in the intro, for this demonstration, we'll be using Active Directory. You can check out articles on our community site for information on how to use other authentication providers. As for hardware, it will depend on your usage of the system. The installation manual and community site have examples of minimum and recommended setups. It's difficult to make specific recommendations because 100 users that use the system very heavily will need more resources than 10,000 users that register a few instances per week. Prepare Windows Server by installing IIS and enabling Windows authentication. The web server should also have dynamic content compression activated. After installing IIS, you can install the .NET Core hosting bundle version 6.0.x. Please double check the installation guide to make sure that you are installing a compatible version. At this point, you should also install the portal certificate where the subject name or alternative domain name matches your desired portal URL. This will be the address of the site that your users will use. The certificate is necessary for the HTTPS binding to make sense later in the installation. For a scenario like this one that uses Active Directory, you will need to create two accounts. One account with logon as back job permissions, this will be known as the application pool account, and another account with logon as service permissions, this will be known as the service account. We strongly advise using two separate accounts for this. Having both of these permissions on one account and using it for both roles is not recommended. As for the MSSQL server, the absolute minimum role that you will need as the person installing is DB Creator and Security Admin. These are for you, the person installing Webman BPS. No other SQL roles are necessary before starting the installation process because everything will be creating during the installation. You will also need local admin permissions for the machine on which you are installing Webman BPS. The installer will check for this. And with that, we're ready to go. Let's go through every step of the installation. Launch the installer, choose a language, accept the license agreement, and from the main menu, choose the first option to create a new installation. And then the first option again for the standalone installation. On the verification step, the system checks for all the components we discussed in the preparation phase. Then choose the components to install. We choose everything here, except the modern web parts at the very bottom. Click Next to confirm the selection, and then click Next again to install everything. This will take a moment. Next, we establish a connection to the SQL Server instance, enter its name, and use Integrated Login. Then you can choose the database language, and also choose to use the Application Pool Account option at the very bottom of the page. As we established in the intro, we'll be using the Application Pool Account to connect to the database through Portal. Privileges will be automatically granted to this application pool account as we create new databases. Speaking of which, the first database to be created is the configuration database. It contains meta information about the installation. The default suggested name is BPS underscore config. I will add my machine name as the prefix to that. The next database is the content database. 
This is the so-called main database that stores the bulk of the user and application data. The installer will suggest a naming scheme based on the name of your config database. We also need to set the database acronym here. Think of the acronym as a business identifier of the database. We usually set three to six characters here. The acronym is especially important in scenarios with multiple content databases. This is by far the longest installation step as this is the biggest database that we'll be creating. So feel free to go and grab a drink while this is taking place. A pop-up will then ask you if you want to create additional content databases. I click no. The attachment and archive databases are optional. I will create an attachment database, but skip the archive database for now. When creating an attachment database, we need to associate it with an existing content database. Next up is the IIS website creation. Let's break this down. First, provide the application pool account and password. This is the logon as bad job account that we used earlier as well. In the website section, the site name will be the name of the node in IIS manager. And lastly, for the binding section to make sense, you will need the certificate that we talked about during the Windows preparation. The default HTTPS port is 443. The most important thing here is the host name. This address must be resolvable by DNS. It will be the address of your portal that has to match the subject name or alternative domain name in the certificate. The next page is a confirmation of your portal address. Enter the full address, which should be the binding and host name from the previous page. In this step, we define the password for the admin account. This account will be used for the first time logging in to Designer Studio and can be deactivated after we synchronize users and assign new admins. We will go over this properly in the host installation part of the guide. Next, we will configure the workflow service. Provide the other account that you prepared. This is the Logon as Service account. At the bottom of the page, you will see the roles that can be assigned to a service. The ones that are selected by default are those necessary for the system to work correctly. Other roles can be activated as they are needed after installation from Designer Studio. And finally, start the service by clicking Next or on the Start Service button in the middle of the page. Apache Solar is the search platform we use in WebCoin BPS. Fill out the host if it wasn't automatically filled out already, and at the bottom of the page, two accounts will be created. The Solar Admin account and the WebCoin BPS account in the context of which certain actions will be carried out. Provide a password for both of them. The WebCoin account is not super important as it can be changed later on, but the admin account is rather important, so hang on to this password. And that concludes the installation. We should now talk about the things that you should do immediately after completing the installation. So let's try Launch Designer Studio and take a look at user synchronization. Our first launch of Designer Studio will make use of the admin account that we set up during installation. We will disable it as soon as we have proper users in our system. In the system settings, we first want to scroll down to Authentication Providers and find Windows Active Directory, since that is what we are using. I will now make sure that Windows Active Directory is active in both Designer Studio and Portal. We can now scroll up a little bit and find Users and Group Synchronization. Here we can provide the domain name and set up a schedule for synchronizing data from your local Active Directory. As we don't want to wait, we can use the Synchronize Now to run a full user synchronization. Now that Active Directory users, including my own user, are synchronized into the system, I will go to Global Privileges and grant myself the System Administrator Privileges. With that, I no longer need this admin account that I am currently using, so I will log out from Designer Studio completely via the menu in the top left corner. Then I will re-log back in, but this time with using my username. It is a good practice to deactivate the admin access account as soon as you don't need it. So, back in System Settings, I will return to Authentication Providers and find Admin Access. I will now disable it in Designer Studio and Portal. At some point, you will also want to activate licenses. This is not crucial right now as you have a 90-day demo period. But the Activator Wizard is found in the top left corner. We can also verify that we can access Portal using our user. I enter the Portal address into the browser and try logging in with my user. Thank you for watching. I hope this video clarified some things about the installation of Web1 BPS. Good luck and be sure to check out our community site if you have any more questions. Goodbye.